give God praise in this house. Come on. 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 Open your mouth. Give him glory. Open your mouth. Give him honor. Open your mouth. Come on. We're online. Come on, GT.
nothing. The Spirit knows because the Holy Ghost is making intercession for me. Come on and give Him glory. Come on and give Him honor. Come on and give Him praise. Come on and put your hands together. Come on. Come on. That's it. What you've been praying for to manifest, you ought to praise them like it's already done. I can't do your miracle for you. But if you want your miracle to manifest this Sunday, Pentecost Sunday morning, you ought to open up your mouth and give God a praise that will shock the enemy. Yes! Yes to your will. Yes to your way. If don't nobody else go, Lord. Send me, I'll go. Holler if you gotta holler. Run if you gotta run. Come on and give him praise. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. That's it. Shock the enemy. He didn't care if you came to church. He just didn't want you to give God no praise. I will bless the Lord. I will bless the Lord at all times. And His praise, and His praise shall continually. That means it don't stop because I'm having a bad day. But His praise is. Come on, lift those hands up. Come on. Come on, we're going to make preaching easy for our pastor. Come on. That's it. The more you praise him, the more he's stepping in. He's stepping into your situation. The more you praise him. You lifting the heavy weights out for you. My hallelujah belongs to you. What my worshipers, I need to see you this morning. Be 
lips, open your mouth. A closed mouth don't get fed, but open your mouth.
Somebody shout Holy Ghost. Put your hands together. I need one big choir. I need one big choir. Somebody say one. It was early one morning. Just about the break of day. Jesus came in my room.
Hallelujah. We're standing all over the building as a token of respect. Come on and just point at our pastor. May God bless. God use. Come on and put those hands together and give God a praise in this house. Come on, you can do better than that. Give them praise. Hallelujah. Before you take your seat, why don't you give Lady Cobra and the GTV Music Ministry a hand for leading us in a powerful praise and worship experience. Come on, we can do better than that. Let's give them another hand. Well, I was glad when they said unto me that we can go back to church. Y'all just missed that. Y'all just missed that. I was glad. I'm not talking about my central workers that's been here all the time, but I was glad when they said unto me, let us go to the house of the Lord. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. We thank you for coming today. The day is Pentecost Sunday. Yeah, the birth of the church where we receive the gift of the Holy Spirit. Thank you, Jesus. We welcome our online audience today. Thank you for tuning in. I want to welcome our online audience from Longview, Wichita Falls, Quitman, Texas, Crockett, Texas, Memphis, Tennessee, Linden, Texas, Atlanta, Texas, Atlanta, Georgia, Shreveport, Louisiana, Canada, Texarkana, Marshall, and Pine Bluff, Arkansas, we, we welcome you, GTV Nation. They're part of the GTV Nation family, and we thank God for them. So good to see each and every one. We want to be in prayer uh, for the Coates family and the Bowers family. Amen. And um, also the uh, Lockwood and her family, Sister Dawkins, so glad to see of you today. Amen. It's so good to see the Hunter's children today. Amen. God bless you. We just welcome you all, amen, to greater true life. Listen, you know what? Uh, there's something about prayer, ain't it? Yeah, prayer, prayer, prayer. Prayer can, can change some things. Prayer can start some things. Amen. And so we believe in the power of prayer and those that are on the prayer list, we are just continuing to pray. Uh, and um, believe in God. Listen, it's, we, what we want to do is um, remind you that our scholarship launching is vastly approaching this coming Saturday. Amen. Well, I want to thank you all, those that are watching online, the donations and the tickets, amen, of supporting this great event. And uh, the A.D. Rylander Scholarship Luncheon that we've been doing for the past eight years. And we're so thankful. We're almost close to reaching our goal. Almost as close. And so we want to ask you that you keep on giving, keep on spreading the word. Because we want to make an impact on young people's lives. And this year, yeah, I got my baby girl. My baby girl, Destiny. Got the last pee in the pot. We'll be graduating. June 19th, Juneteenth, and I said, ain't that appropriate, Juneteenth, amen, it's a free, I'm, me and the first lady going to be free <laughs> on that day, but, <laughs> but we celebrating, amen, her, listen, it's time to give, come on, it's giving time, there's many ways to give, um, this on the screen, you can give by give the fire, cash app, sale. You can do it the old-fashioned way, so you can't be God-given. Pay your tithes and your offerings. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, some, somebody say, you can't be God-given. And I'm going to challenge you today to give a Pentecost Sunday seed, 50. If those that can and will can sow a $50 seed, that's something I, I don't take offerings uh, lightly, amen, and, and there are, uh, because you, you get blessed when you give, uh, come on, I wish I had somebody, amen, don't let nobody tell you nothing wrong, I, I, I gave my way out of debt, y'all ain't saying nothing, I gave my way out of poverty, and so God honors faith, and faith honors God, 
And so if you want to be blessed, give your tithes and your offerings. Amen. And so if God's been good to you, if God has given you the strength and the ability to obtain wealth, give him some. Give him some of it. And we have a gracious God that he, he's so good, he could request you to give it all back. He could request 90. He just said, give me 10%. Y'all saying? And so will you do that? All right, it's Pentecost Sunday. Acts 2, 1, 2 says, And on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly, there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. Ooh, it said, and it filled the house where they're sitting. I want you to just do me a favor. Just point at three people and say, Lord, fill the house. Fill the house. Fill the house. You may be seated. I, I asked those of you, shameless plug, that was watching Wednesday night in the Word, this past Wednesday, I asked a question in Bible study. And I asked the question, who is the Holy Spirit and what do he do? And I told you that my reason and hope would be in the result of this teaching, and here's my reason, peep this, that people who I love and love Jesus and are good people have stuff that got them trapped. Beautiful people who love God, love this church, but was trapped, didn't have the power of the Holy Spirit, didn't know how to get out of stuff, didn't know who to tell, who to trust. They just felt trapped by something. Great people love church, love God, trying to live okay, but got this one little thing that they can't get out of. And for others, it's the issue of depression, dealing with generational spirits all the time. No matter how well things are going well in your life, you always find yourself melancholy and Kali and a bit of the press always tripping on something just no power no no power and by the way you know what I've gotten too old missionary web to let people project their mess on me so I don't want you to think that I'm taking responsibility. You see, when I was a younger pastor, mother, I thought that everything y'all did was my fault. And I'm learning now that people got their own Jesus and their own Bible. You either want to do right or you don't. It's nobody's fault what you got yourself into. But I do want to take my responsibility or my part in preaching it so that I know that I'm really free to say, you know what? I taught you. I showed you. It's up to you to apply what I taught. And just maybe there has not been enough teaching on the power of the Holy Spirit. Enough pneumonology teaching, pneuma spirit, the study of the Holy Spirit, who he is. And that's one reason. And I pray as a result of this teaching that people are going to leave here today free. By the end of this message, you're going to have power to overcome stuff. By the end of this teaching, you're going to get what God, all that God has for you, time miracles, healing, discernment, knowing who to try to, who trying to run game on you, knowing what job to take, knowing who to date and not to date, Holy Spirit telling you what to do, where to go, you want him to talk to you, you want him to run your life, you want him to run and control your life like whiskey control a drunk, y'all ain't, that's the ultimate goal that he will take control over your life. And then the last time we stopped on what Jesus said. What did Jesus say about the Holy Spirit? And we gave John 16, 7 when Jesus said, but I tell you the truth. It is to your advantage that I go away. Because if I don't, for if I do not go away, the helper will not come to you. But if I go, I will send him to you. And then I told you that one version of the Bible calls him friend. 
Another version called him advocate. Another version called him comforter. And I ask you, how would you like to be with somebody who was your advocate, your helper, your comforter, and your friends? And let me tell you something. And some of us know that as much as they try, no spouse, no friend is always your advocate, your comforter, your helper, and your friend. But there is a friend. Y'all not having church. Uh, but there is a friend. Somebody who sit closer and more consistent than your mama, your man, your husband, your woman, your kids. He is the Holy Spirit. And he presently lives in you. And then Jesus says in Luke 24, 49, y'all remember last week? He said, and behold, I am sending forth the promise of my father upon you, but you are to stay in the city until you are clothed with power from on high. He said, Sister Lockwood, watch this. He says, stay in the city. Jesus is getting ready to leave. And he says, stay in the city. He tells the 12, the 120, he tells Mama Mary and the women that was with him, as many as 500 had seen him after he got up from the grave. And he tells them, stay in the city until you get power. And I'm getting ready to get up out of here. But he said, don't bust no moves. And, and there's a principle here. And I think we may need to take another look at our GTV way minister orientation packet. Maybe the GTV way orientation needs a new addendum because many people are not staying in the city long enough. Maybe people, Mother Williams, are jumping into ministry with no power. <laughs> they ain't saying, they jumping into stuff. And let me tell you something. If you don't have no power, the first time somebody offends you in ministry, you need a sabbatical. <laughs> yeah, when the first time somebody do something that you don't like in ministry, you done quit the church, you done quit everything else. Well, somebody hurt my feelings. And pastor, you didn't shake my hand. And pastor, you walked right past me. Pastor, I thought you would have been there. Just all messed up because you don't have no power good so I don't just want a church full of people that doing work I want a church full of ministry people that got some power because let me tell you something ministry will mess you up and church will mess you up and husbands and wives and children and life you need power everybody We got too many people just jumping and leaving and ain't staying. Jesus told them, y'all stay in the city till you get some power. Ooh. And then finally, we make it to the circumference of our text. Take, take a look at Acts, everybody. Acts 1 and 8. But you will receive power power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you shall be my witnesses both in Jerusalem and all Judea and Samaria and even to the remotest parts of the earth. Jesus is having a conversation with them. He says yeah, you shall receive power. Now please please notice the context right there. He's literally standing there getting ready to step on a cloud. He's getting ready to get up out of Dodge. He said, okay, I'm about to go, but just hang out together because in a few days, in a few weeks, uh, the one that I promise is coming. Uh, yeah, the one I promise, the promise is coming, and he said, don't do nothing until he comes. And when he comes you'll know it because you'll start witnessing and you'll be changing the world in every place and then the next verse verse 9 through 11 says after saying this he was taken up into a cloud while they were watching 
and they could no longer see him. Verse 10, as they strained to see him rising into heaven. The Bible says that they was watching Jesus and two angels showed up dressed in white and said, why y'all looking up? there. The same Jesus that left uh, uh, is coming back. That's my first shout. You ought to point at somebody and say he's coming back. He, he, he's coming back. And then finally, peep this, Acts chapter 2. This is so good, y'all. Verses 1 and 2 where today's teaching starts because it says on the day of Pentecost, all the believers were meeting together in one place and suddenly somebody ought to just holler suddenly uh, suddenly there, there was a sound that suddenly uh, uh, there was a sound sister Constance I started to preach a message called I hear something y'all he said a sound from heaven like a mighty windstorm and it filled the house where they were sitting. So peep this, Jesus got on a cloud and left. This is so good. So there's this waiting period between when he left and when the Holy Spirit came. In the meantime, they go up to the upper room and they hang together every day and they are praying, they're waiting which is where we get the word tearing from. We don't tarry no more. <laughs> but, but that's where we get the word tarrying from. And the Bible says on the day of Pentecost. Now Pentecost is the name that the Greek speaking Jews used to describe the festival of weeks. Yeah, they, they would celebrate uh, the feast of, <laughs> festival of weeks for 49 days. It was a 40, that was a long party for 49 days. People from everywhere. And the 50th day, they called Pentecost because Pentecost means 50. Now, Pastor, why are they celebrating? They cel what are they celebrating? They are celebrating Passover. Oh, you just missed another good place to shout. Because do y'all remember back in Exodus when Pharaoh was acting a fool and God said, I'm sending my death angel by and I'm killing every firstborn. Now watch this. Only house that I'm not killing nobody in is the one that got the blood on the doorpost from the right kind of animal. He said, when I go to that house, good God, I feel like preaching up in here. He said, when I go to that house, I'm killing everybody else on the street. But when I get to your house, if your house got blood on it, what I'm going to do is pass over your house and go down the street and kill somebody. Y'all just miss your shout. Can I tell you why y'all are still alive with all of the crazy stuff y'all are doing and have done can I tell you why your friend is in the penitentiary and one family member of yours is crazy and you sitting here in church in your right mind and you're free because when God got to you he seen the blood of Jesus and he he passed over you. I wish I had about five people in this church. Is there anybody that know that you should have been dead, but God passed you over? I come to bust your bubble. Baby, you are not all of that. You have made some mistakes. Some of your friends are dead that you graduated with you, and you sitting here with your right mind. You look younger than they are. You should have lost it all. Can I tell you why you here? Because instead of killing you God saw the blood he saw the blood of Jesus and passed over do me a favor point at three people and say he passed me over he look at three more people and say he passed me over is there anybody know that you should have lost it all, but God passed you over and gave you another chance? Woo, I just felt that. Woo! Come on, I feel a grateful shout right quick. I'm going to give you 30 seconds to shout because he passed you over. Come on, come on. Come on, 
You should be gone. You should be dead. But God is rich in his mercy and goodness. Stand up and sit back down and holler. He passed me over. He passed me over. Woo! He passed me over. I just had a flashback, Elder, down in TJC, in East Texas, at a house party. Yo, Yo, y'all thought pastor came out the womb preaching, didn't you? But they were shooting. One friend of mine got shot right past me. And when I think about it, the Lord, it should have been me. But thank you. What's the lady that's on that song? But I had a praying grandmama. And she plead the blood of Jesus. And the Holy Ghost told me it's because you got passed over. <laughs> y'all, y'all, y'all ain't talking to me. Let, me. let me get back. The text says, Acts 2, verse 1. On the day of Pentecost. All the believers were meeting together in one place. Suddenly there was a sound from heaven like the roaring of a mighty windstorm. And it filled the house where they were sitting. I want you to catch this. They all been sitting there. They've been praying for days, praying for weeks. He had told them, don't y'all leave till y'all get the Holy Spirit. And they obeyed him. They are literally waiting and suddenly, whoo, suddenly. The reason why it was so dramatic, because that was the literally, literal birthday of the church. That was the coming out party of the Holy Spirit. So he came in like that suddenly. Y'all remember when Jesus was born and the angels were singing in the sky? That was his coming to earth party. Okay, when the Holy Spirit had his coming to earth, that's why it was so dramatic because this was the first time that the Holy Spirit came. So he wasn't coming to visit like Jesus was, but he was coming to stay. Y'all just missed that. So when he came up in there, he made his announcement, he made his presence felt and it was so dramatically people could sense it all outside because the people that was on the inside of that house had been filled with the Holy Ghost and what was the corresponding result of that feeling your Bible says what was the result your Bible says they start speaking in other languages let me show you in the Bible Acts 2 3 and 4 then what looked like flames or tongues of fire appeared and settled on each of them. And everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking. Here's a major caveat in other languages. As the Holy Spirit gave them the ability when the Holy Spirit came, the Bible said it rested upon them. Uh, Sister Patricia, I started to preach a message, sit on me. Y'all just missed that. Because is there anybody in here want God to just to sit on you? I'm not going there, but if he sit on me, then everything will be all right. I feel like preaching in here today. He said on the day of Pentecost, the Holy Ghost sat on them. Would you just point at your neighbor and say, neighbor, I need the Holy Ghost to just sit on me. When my flesh is acting up, I need the Holy Ghost to sit on me sit on me so I can learn to get my flesh under subjection don't let me up Holy Ghost I need the Holy Ghost to sit on me so I won't bust or creep move sit on me so I won't lose my mind 
sit on me so I won't lose my peace. Sit on me so I won't lose my joy. Because this joy that I have, the world didn't give it to me. And the world can't take it away. Because the Holy Ghost sit on me. Somebody ought to sit up and sit back down and say, sit on me, God. The Holy Ghost to sit on me. The text says, and everyone present was filled with the Holy Spirit and began speaking in other languages. The Spirit fell on them and fire. Oh my God. I'm praying, I'm praying. That as the Holy Ghost fills this house, that everybody in the house gets filled today. I don't know who this is for, but somebody in here is going to get your fire back. Oh my God, I feel it in here. Somebody in here, you have lost your passion for life. Your passion for marriage, your passion for yourself, and your passion for the Lord. But God said in this season, this is the season where you're going to get your fire back. And when you get your fire back, the Bible says that when the fire fell on their tongues, they started speaking in other languages. Somebody say, say language. Now, now that has been greatly misinterpreted by many circles. That part right there in the scripture, that ain't the gift of tongues. See, tongues is a gift. And the word of the Lord says the spirit gives gifts at the spirit's choosing. Everybody not going to have the gift of tongues. When I say gift of tongues, I mean your heavenly language. If you have that gift, you ought not be afraid, ashamed, or embarrassed of that gift. Because if you don't have that gift, you just don't have it. That does not mean that you are not less spiritual than anybody else that have that gift. Okay, y'all looking at me crazy. Give me scripture. Though I speak with the tongues as many angels and don't know how to love. I'm a clanging gall and a noisy. Y'all wish y'all would talk to me and y'all get so wrapped up in tongues. I seen people that speak in tongues and won't speak to me. I, I, I seen people speak in tongues and cuss me out at the same time. You can speak all the tongues you want, but if you do not have love, y'all ain't saying nothing. And I'm praying that what happened in this text will happen to all of us. They started speaking different languages, which means that the fire that fell on them changed the way they talked. Y'all missed it, y'all, because when the fire falls on you, you'll start to talk in a way that brings blessings to those who hear you. Woo! When the fire falls on you, you won't talk in divisive and destructive ways. You'll talk, you'll talk in ways that people around you will get blessed by what you speak. I'm in the text. I don't care y'all roll your eyes. They spoke in other languages. Languages and the people of those languages that they were speaking in, God bless, because they heard the word of God. So, so now I'm so I get so tired of the kind of talk that church folk do. Y'all ain't got to say amen. I'm so tired of the gossip, the rumors. The backbiting, the criticism, but when the fire falls, you won't let nothing come out of your mouth that can't bless somebody. You don't talk in ways that don't bless somebody. You don't tear people down. Now, you might speak in criticism to them, to love, to bless them, but look at your neighbor and ask him, how's your fire? Go ahead. <laughs> come on, ask him, how's your fire? I, I, and guess what, Brother Hunter? They can't check your fire by how you shout. They can't check your fire how you run. 
They, they can't check your fire on how you pick them up and put them down. They, 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 they can't check your fire by how you give. They check your fire by how you talk because what you say speaks louder than how you, oh, I wish y'all would talk to me in here. And when the fire from heaven falls, it changes your language. There is going to be an anointing for fire in this house. And when the fire falls, there will be intensity. Your praise will be intense. Your worship will be intense. You will have passion burning on the inside. Now, you do know that fire ignites and impacts stuff that ain't in the fire. But in the co-centric circle of the fire, you ain't got to be in the fire for it to get an impact. Uh, I ain't in the fire. But if the fire is burning good, I can feel it. Oh, I feel heaven about to come in here today. I ain't touching the fire. But if the fire is warm enough, I can get something from the fire. Oh, what are you saying, brother pastor? What I'm saying is that when the fire of heaven falls on you, the chair that you sit down in, whoever sits in your vicinity, if they came in church with a bad attitude, or they came to church with stuff on their mind by the time they sit next to you long enough there's gonna be a warmth that come upon you and you gonna start to feel better and it's because you sit next to somebody who had the fire of the Holy Ghost I wish you would point at your neighbor and say neighbor don't sit next to me because I'm hot with the Holy Ghost. Tell them I'm on fire for the Lord. And if you sit next to me long enough, you'll start to feel better. You'll start to smile better. My smile will energize you. My praise will impact you because you're sitting by fire. I wish I had a witness in here who can just shout fire. God, let your fire fall in this house. I dare you to point at three people and just say fire, fire, fire. Find your two or three more people and tell them fire. Find somebody else and say fire. Leave your seat and go somewhere and tell them fire. Yes. Yes, yes, fire, I want the fire of the Holy Ghost to fall on me, and I know what some of y'all are saying, you're saying, Pastor, I ain't been on fire for a long time, well that's perfect, because dry wood, it is fire the best. You ought to run out of your seat and say fire, fire on your attitude, fire in your thinking, fire in your talking, fire in your praise, fire in your worship, fire. Can you feel it? Can you feel the fire burning on the inside? Moving on the outside, can you feel the fire on your road? Can you feel the spirit? Tell your neighbor if you don't want to be burned, don't sit next to me. Because if you go sit next to me, every demon, every bad attitude, every stronghold is gonna jump off this road. Because I got fire. Somebody say fire. 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 Some of y'all are trying not to get it. Some of y'all trying to steal and be cute. But there's ignition on your road. There's something that's about to ignite on your road. And you're trying to keep still. But if you sit there long enough, the smoke, woo, 
is going to blow your way. And before you know it, fire. Jeremiah said, I said I wasn't going to say nothing. But it's just like fire. Shut up in my bones. Is there anybody in here that wants your passion back? Is there anybody in here that wants your joy back? Is there anybody in here that wants your peace back? Is there anybody in here that wants your energy back? I came to serve notice on the devil on Pentecost Sunday. This is the place where the fire is going to fall. You've had your last day. Devil keeping God's children in bondage. But somebody say fire. Fire. And let me tell you something. And if you sitting there and somebody won't help you, then make your own fire. Do you know how to make your own fire? You do know how to make your own fire, don't you, Brother Hunter? You put two things together. And you just start clapping your hand and fire. Somebody say fire. Fire in your house. Fire on your children. Fire on your marriage. Fire on your finances. Fire on your ministry. Now point at three people and say fire. Fire, yeah, yes. Somebody got their joy back. Somebody got their praise back. Somebody got their smile back. Come on and put your hands together and spread the fire. Come on, spread the fire. Spread the fire. Listen. God told me to tell somebody, don't you quit. Don't you throw in the towel. Don't you give up. Don't you say that you are done because you're sitting in too much fire. And if you would just submit to the fire of the Holy Ghost, he's going to reunite your I want the fire, y'all. Does anybody here want your passion back? Does anybody here want your fire? You want your joy back? You have forgotten the smile. And don't get me wrong, we've been through a rough season. Last year was rough, and it's still rough. Some of us have had the worst week of our life. Some of you have forgotten how to smile. Some of you have forgotten just to be happy about life. But there's fire in this room. And I want the Holy Ghost to fill this house. I just want to be just a fire in this church. I want to be such a fire in this church that we will ignite each other. That we will bear each other burdens. That we will lift each other up. I wish I had somebody in here that would just tear this church up right now and say, I want the fire. I wish I had somebody that would just tear this church up because you want the fire in here. Can I tell you this? Whenever... Whenever the Holy Ghost moved elsewhere in the Bible, when you read it, and whenever you see the Holy Ghost move somewhere, and there were a group of people, watch this, chains fell off. Prison doors were open. Because that was a sound, and that particular sound was to get people free. Watch this. But in Acts 2, 
Mm. That sound from heaven in Acts 2 was not to get people free. Hear this. It was to get people filled. Pentecost Sunday is not about you wearing white, red, or black. Pentecost Sunday is for those who need to get filled with the Holy Ghost. What is this that makes me want to do right when I want to do wrong? Whatever it is, it won't let me hold my peace. <laughs> I wish I had somebody in here. And I want you to know that we have limited the power of the Holy Ghost. We have limited him to just speaking in tongues and running through the church and rolling on the floor. But Jesus said, the Holy Ghost is your comforter. You need the Holy Ghost for the moment you feel like you ain't got God. Woo! You need the Holy Ghost when there are moments when you feel like you all by yourself and nobody there for you. It ain't about you running around and jumping up and dancing and speaking in tongues. He said the Holy Ghost is your comforter. He's your helper. He's your advocate. He's your friend. Pentecost Sunday is about that I need to get filled I want to be filled I need to get refilled Woo! don't you tell me the kind of year that we just experienced tongues ain't gonna help us y'all yeah I, I mess y'all up I don't mess y'all religious tradition for I know I'm messing with your tradition but that ain't what my Bible tells me. After the year that I've experienced, I need a comforter. After I done lost my loved one, y'all ain't saying nothing. After I lost my friends, my people that I love, I lost my job, I need an advocate. I need more than a sick of my high. I need more than just a. I need to be filled. I need power. I'm in some stuff. I don't know who to talk to, who to trust. But I'm in something that I don't have no power to get out of. Oh, yeah, I'm talking to some of y'all. You can sit here and fool me, but you can't fool God. You got something in your life that you just ain't got no power that got you trapped. But Jesus said, I'm sending the Holy Ghost. And you shall receive. You shall receive what? I'm saying this, I can't get out of it. I can't see my. Yeah, you look, when you have that power. <laughs> Woo! Pastor, I want to get out of it. I'm tired of living like I'm living. I know it ain't right. That's because you ain't got no power. Somebody told me one time, they said, what church you? The pastor, I tell you what kind of church I am. Oh, I can't live that kind of life. I say, I can't either without the power of the Holy Ghost. I come to tell I don't care how long you've been in church. You can't live this life without the power of the Holy Ghost. You can know every scripture. You can know every tongue. You can. But ain't no way you can live this life in this life. Jesus said in this life you're going to have some trials. You're going to have some tribulations. But he said be of good cheer. overcame the world and I've sent you some help listen I need every person in here to say you know what pastor I need I need I need to be filled I want you to come to this altar right now those of you in here saying pastor I need to get 
I need to get refilled because I don't have that abiding presence of the Holy Spirit, at least not with any evidence. But I need God to fill me. I need God to fill me with His Holy Spirit. Those of you that know that I need a fresh touch from God, I just need a fresh touch from God. Pastor, it's not that I'm not saved. It's not that I... But I just need a fresh touch. I don't feel them like I used to feel them. I want to feel them like when I first got saved. I want to feel them like when I first got the Holy Ghost. God said, you can. Come, 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 come. I need a fresh touch. And when you come, come with your hands lifted up. Because the fire is about to fall in this place. Come on. When your hands lifted up, just begin to say, feel me. Come on. Just begin to say, feel me, Lord. Come on. When you're at this altar, feel me, feel me, feel me. Come on. Don't worry about who's looking at you. Don't worry about what people are thinking about you. It ain't about them. It's about you right now. It's about you. It's about your own soul salvation. I need to be filled. Need you to open your mind. You provide the fire. Come on, we for the tarry. How provide the sacrifice? Come on, right now. You pour out your spirit. I will open. On him. Come on. This is your day to get filled. You provide the fire. Woo, come on. Wherever you at, wherever you are. I'll provide the sand. Lift those hands. Come on. Say, Lord, feel me. Lord, feel me. Lord, you pour out your spirit. I will open. Come on, feel me. I need to be filled. I need power. I need to be filled so I can have power. You provide the fire. Yes. I'll provide the sacrifice. If you pour out your spirit. Concentrate on him. Put your mind on him. Come on. Then I'll provide your sacrifice. Yes, 
this house. Fill this house. Fill this house, Lord. We need the fire. We need the consuming fire. I dare you to catch on fire. Holy Ghost, free my child. <laughs> I dare some of you say, Holy Ghost, free, free my child. Come on. Free my son. Free my daughter. In the name of Jesus. Oh, that's what happens when the fire falls. That's what happens when you let the Holy Ghost have his way. When you get out of the way and let him have his way. Come on, come on, come on, come on. The presence of the Lord is in this house. Come on. The presence of the Lord is in this house. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come here, Brother Hunter. I want you to lift your hands. God is blessing your house because you're the head of your house. You see what God is doing? You cannot deny the power of God. And God knows your heart. He sees your heart. And I told you that God had work for you to do here. Once you got your priorities straight, that's what he's doing. You ought to tell him thank you. As you cover your family, God is covering you. Come on. As you asking God to cover you, you ain't seen nothing yet. You ain't seen nothing yet. Woo! Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I pray that God would give you supernatural strength as a man of your house as the leader the priest of your home that when you see the enemy come that you will pray in the name of Jesus that you will come to your man of God and say 
Pastor, I just need you to touch and agree with me because I see the enemy trying to come in and I'm praying, but just touch and agree. One can chase a thousand. Two can chase. Woo! And I feel God moving in your house right now in the name of Jesus. And I just want you to say, Lord, I thank you. Come on, just say, Lord, I thank you. Woo! Hallelujah. He's going to do it right now. In the name of Jesus. Just hug your wife, hug your, hug your son, hug your grandson. go to Sister Della's house. Touch her body. She's a believer. She's your child. God, whatever is wrong in her body right now, Lord, let her body lined up with your word in the name of Jesus. God, you say whatever we bind on earth is already bind in heaven. Whatever is loose on earth is already loose in heaven. And God, we loose healing right now. In the name of Jesus. Come here, Sister Coates. I want y'all to stay right here because we need some witness. Listen, would you just stretch your hand out to Sister Coates? She needs her sister sick. We need some sisters. Woo. I told you, the Holy Spirit is not about us just doing all this dancing and stuff, but it's about lifting each other up. When our sister, when our brother needs it, the name of Jesus. God, we know what the doctors have said. God, we pray. Let your will be done. In the name of Jesus. There's nothing too hard for you, God. So God, as she's going through, give Sister Coach strength. Give Sister Coates encouragement. Be that comforter. Be that advocate. Be that friend. Be that helper. That only you can give it, Lord, in the name of Jesus. No matter how Brother Teddy try. And I know her husband loves her dearly. But not even Brother Teddy can do for her what the Holy Spirit could do. So Father, do it right now. Lift up that heavy burden right now in the name of Jesus. Have your way in her life right now in the name of Jesus. We call those things done. Woo! We call it done. Come on, somebody shout hallelujah. Touch her body right now. Her body is aching to 
God, right now, is that you strengthen those bones right now in the name of Jesus. Let this body line up with the word of God, for by your stripes, she's already healed. So, God, I pray now that your healing power of Jesus Christ oh, will flow through her body in the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. Oh, she didn't come this far for you to leave her now. The same God, the same God that raised Christ Jesus from the dead. God be that same God that will raise her to the Spirit, God. In the name of Jesus, we say yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. Yes to your will. Yes to your way. Come on, we rebuke every pain in her body. You say they take your hands off of her. She belongs to God. In the name of Jesus. Yes, Lord. church say amen come on we're receiving come on we're receiving hallelujah hallelujah Woo! yes lord 
us, Lord. There's fire in this house. Woo! I said there's fire in this house. When the fire from heaven falls, there will be glory moments. There's no way that we could orchestrate this. This was the power of God. This was the Holy Spirit filling us again. Thank you, Jesus. Well, woo, I'm trying to move on. But let the Spirit do his perfect work. Let us get ready to take our communion. Those of you that are watching online, you can go in your kitchen, get you a cracker, get you some juice. And you can have communion with us. Savior Jesus Christ before he got the tray. He took the bread which I am lifting up. He took the bread and he lifted up to his disciples. represents my body which will be broken for you and he said take it in that same manner he lifted up the cup which I now do ministering in his name told his disciples in this cup is my blood which is the new covenant because without the remission Without the blood, there will be no remission for sin. And he said, drink all of it. And the Apostle Paul wrote to the church at Corinth. He said, as often as you eat of this bread, drink of this cup, you do show the Lord death till he come. Let us pray. Our God and our Savior, Father, we thank you today. We thank you for this time of remembrance. God, we shall never forget what you've done for us. Over 2,000 years ago, you, you carried our sins up on that cross. You substituted for us. Should have been us. So God, I pray now that for everyone that have received the bread today, which represents your body, yeah. let it provide spiritual nourishment. Woo. When they drink your blood, God, let the blood oh, heal whatever ailments that's in their life. In the name of Jesus. And we thank you in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Thank you for tuning in, those of you who are watching online. If you haven't got a chance to give, please give. Also, tune in this Wednesday night for Wednesday Night in the World. I know.